Unit 17, the United States enters World War II. Learning objectives. We'll be learning about the role of geographic and military factors on the outcomes of the battles of the Pacific and European theaters of war. Identify the roles and sacrifices of individual American soldiers. Examine the impact of women on the workforce and armed forces. Examine the impact of World War II on the economic and social conditions of African Americans. Discuss the issues and impact of the internment of Japanese Americans. And describe the war's impact on the home front. The big concepts. America enters World War II following the attack at Pearl Harbor by Japan on December 7th, 1941. The United States agrees with our allies, Britain and the Soviet Union, to focus on defeating Germany first. To fight Japan, the United States uses a geographic strategy known as island hopping. America wins a pivotal naval battle against the Japanese near the islands of Midway. Women and minorities play a major role in the American war effort. World War II leads to the desegregation, integration of the armed forces. Japanese Americans on the West Coast, because of the attack on Pearl Harbor, are discriminated against and forced to sell their belongings and relocate to several internment camps after FDR signs an executive order. The issues over Japanese internment is brought before the Supreme Court in the court case of Fred Korematsu versus the United States of America. America's home front changes due to rationing, bond drives, propaganda, and the conversion of factories to wartime production. Our first vocab term is the critical battle of Midway. The United States had broken the Japanese code and they knew that the Japanese were going to attack uh, an, an American uh, island military outpost on the island of Midway. The United States and Japan fight a pivotal battle using their aircraft carriers, and the United States is able to spot the Japanese fleet first, therefore launching the first blows against their carrier task force. And this was the major victory for the United States and the turning point in our war against Japan. Uh, four Japanese aircraft carriers were sunk, one American aircraft carrier were sunk, and Ameri uh, aircraft carriers were the most important piece of hardware, military equipment that uh, these na uh, navies had. Look at minorities, the Tuskegee Airmen, first black uh, military aviators in the United States Army Air Corps, a precursor of the U.S. Air Force, trained at the Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama. Uh, they flew more than 15,000 individual sorties in Europe and North Africa during World War II. No bombers were ever lost to enemy aircraft while being escorted by the Tuskegee Airmen. 150 distinguished flying crosses were earned. Japanese Americans fought in a famous regiment, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Despite being uh, discriminated against on the West Coast and forced into internment camps, uh, these Japanese Americans, uh, second generation American soldiers of Japanese ancestry, fought heroically for the United States, primarily in Italy. Navajo code talkers, these were Native Americans who used their Navajo language uh, for the United States Marine Corps in the Pacific Theater against Japan because uh, their language could not be broken by uh, the enemy. Between 375 and 420 became code talkers, saving a countless number of lives through their work using their language. Women in the workforce, we're talking about mo total mobilization of the United States economy. A lot of men are, are volunteer drafted into the armed services, so women uh, take their place much like in World War I. Women comprised 36.1% of the civilian labor force at the height of the war. There were over 19 million women in the labor force. The female labor force grew by 50%. Approximately 400,000 US women served with the armed forces, clerical work, non-combat pilots and medical staff so fair employment practices committee uh, created in 1941 by franklin roosevelt banning discriminatory employment practices by federal agencies and all unions and companies engaged in war related work 
of African Americans lobbied FDR for this to end discriminatory, this discriminatory practices in war industries. Integration of the Armed Services Executive Order 9981 is an executive order served issued on July 26, 1948, following the war by President Harry S. Truman. It abolished discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, and national origin. This is uh, primarily in part because of Americans, uh, minority groups, service, and sacrifices during World War II. It leads to the end of segregation in the armed services. Talk, uh, I mentioned previously, Japanese Americans uh, were discriminated, uh, discriminated against and forced into internment camps on the West Coast. Fred Korematsu challenged the uh, FDR's Executive Order 9066, which ordered the internment camps to be built and Japanese Americans to sell their belongings and relocate to them. The order set in motion the mass transportation and relocation of more than 120,000 Japanese Americans. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled in Fred Korematsu in a 6-3 decision that the detention was a military necessity and not based on race, so the executive order was found to be constitutional by the Supreme Court. Very controversial. Rationing. So the United States needs to ration much like during World War I. Rationing was a means of ensuring the fair distribution of food and commodities that when they were scarce for the armed services, it begins with gasoline and later included uh, foods such as butter, sugar, and bacon. Eventually, most foods were covered by the rationing system, with the exception of fruit and vegetables. To raise money for the war, bond drives. The United States sold uh, treasury bonds to encourage Americans to finance the wars. Uh, between November 1942 and December 1945, Americans invested approximately $150 billion in bonds to finance World War II. So you would loan the government your money and you would receive it back after a certain number of years with interest paid on it. So the government could use the American people's money to help finance the conflict against the Axis powers. To encourage Americans to join the military, to ration, to work in the war industry, uh, large scale propaganda campaigns were used to encourage Americans to do these things. Propaganda is ideas, facts, or allegations spread deliberately to further one's cause. So what was our cause? To win World War II, we needed to encourage Americans to do this because a lot of Americans prior to Pearl Harbor wanted the United States to remain neutral. A lot of this uh, same types of propaganda was used during World War I that we saw in our World War I lecture. The Bracero program brought Mexican workers to replace American workers dislocated by the war. Uh, for the Spanish term meaning manual labor, this was a series of laws and diplomatic agreements that allowed uh, Mexican farm laborers to come into the United States. Uh, we had a labor shortage. Wartime factories in the wake of Pearl Harbor, the president set staggering goals for the nation's factories. 60,000 aircraft in 1942, 125,000 in 1943, 120,000 tanks in the same period. In an attempt to coordinate the government war agencies, Roosevelt created the, created the War Production Board in 1942. This was to orchestrate our massive uh, economic recovery from the Great Depression and to supply our allies and our, our armed services with the military equipment needed to defeat Germany, Italy, and Japan. And that's the end of our lecture.